So, Hugh, Magnum PI this week. Uh, and I I think we had a brief chat about this. You've seen maybe one episode. I think I've seen 20 minutes of an episode. But um, during the week, I had just... I was bringing up the episode that we were going to, we are going to be watching. So again, I went with the top rated IMDB episode and the theme music for Magnum PI is as familiar as the A team to me. Mate, I, I was going to say, I was going to bring it to the table. It, it could be for me, one of the most happy bringing intro songs um, of all time. Like when I hear that, it just so. makes me happy and it's up. It, it is up there with the A team for me. It, I think what caught me off guard was how familiar I was with it. How how I I watched when I watched that intro, it was as if I'd seen it a hundred times. It was almost as if I was in a past life a fan of Magnum, and came back and and the show was familiar somehow. Um, so it, it 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 was it was something that caught me off guard. Um, and what I thought we would do here is because I, I was reading the description of Magnum PI, and I wanted to share that with you because. The show's got a really interesting premise because when I look at the show, it ticks a lot of the boxes right out of the gate. Now, when I looked at this show going in, I had no expectations where, if I'm honest, I thought Dukes of Hazard for me was going to be high. Um, yeah. you, you know, so I had no expectations going into this, but it's ticking a lot of boxes. And, and I'll show you what I mean. Yeah. Um, I'm going to share. I, I set up the I set up the uh, actual show screen. I didn't set up this one. Uh, so just trying to stay with our uh, our a method of not being organized or me not being organized here. So just to make sure we're on brand. So uh, Magnum PI is an American crime drama television series starring Tom Selleck, who has the greatest mustache known to man as Thomas Magnum, which if you were to cast a name, like well, that's think. like, a, that's like the, the kind of name Homer Simpson gives himself. If he's given the opportunity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Private investigator Magnum. <laughs> it's just it's perfect, isn't it? Thomas Magnum, a private investigator living on Oahu, Hawaii. Now that's a box ticked for me. Um, so when we look at '80s TV shows, we look at escapism, we look at that sort of. Uh, I would love to be in this position, living that life. So we've got, I'm I think, right. dreamland location. Yeah, the series. This surprised me. Ran from 1980 to 1988 during its first run broadcast uh, on the American Television Network CBS. So I didn't realize it ran as long as it had, and that may be why the the theme song is so familiar to me. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not as surprised by that. I thought it was like a a decent term. Eight eight years actually, in comparison to what we've done, is it, on the higher scale though, isn't it? Well, I can't remember what yeah. Dukes of Hazard was, but Dukes was close to eight. Solid. I think yeah. 18 was five. Miami Vice was five. So this is high. Oh, higher it's about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so according to Nielsen ratings, Miami, the Miami Magnum PI consistently ranked in the top 20 U.S. television programs during the first five years of its original run in the United States. Now that for me is telling. Miami Vice in the first five years didn't. It was a good show and it was a very popular show and there was a lot of investment in that show. However, that show had a significant drop off this show was peaking for the entire time you know duration miami vice would have been on oh that's so, some credit there and and, and what, yeah what makes it i, I don't know what the miami vice description was but this is a crime drama as well so would it would it been in the same uh genre yeah i i think it's the same genre but i don't know that it's quite the same i think I think oh, Miami quality, Vice. I'd imagine there's some differences, but I, I thought like as far as like stacking up ratings and comparisons, it, it would be like for like almost. Yeah, I, I as much as and I've seen I've seen parts of Magnum PI and I've seen quite a few episodes of Miami Vice. If you were to ask me if they're the same show, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, no, cool. no, but they probably are going for the same demographic, really. Well, I remember Magnum PI being, I, I was surprised to see drama. I, I suppose that's what I'm highlighting because I, I thought it was a bit kind of comedy and you've got the um, the psychic guy who, I'm, is he English or he's like, he's got kind of like a slightly camp character as well, uh, if I remember. I think we're, that is coming up in the description. So this, this okay. is the premise of the show. So Thomas Sullivan Magnum III, holy shit, he's the third is a private investigator played by Tom Selleck, resides in a guest house of a 200-acre beachfront estate called Robin's Nest. That's another tick box. Dream home. Yeah, absolutely. It, 
in Hawaii at the invitation of its owner, Robin Masters, the celebrated but never seen author of several dozen lurid novels. So right away, I, I'm hooked because I want to know how the hell is he he in, into this setup here? Ostensibly, this is a quid pro quo for Magnum Services based upon his expertise in security. The pilot and several early episodes suggest Magnum had done Masters a favor of some kind, possibly, when Masters hired him for a case. The voice of Robin Masters, heard only in five episodes, is provided by Orson Welles. Hmm. Uh, hey. Mac yeah, I, I had no idea about that. Magnum lives a luxurious life on the estate and operates as a PI on cases that suit him. The only thorn in the side of his near-perfect lifestyle is Jonathan Quayle Higgins III, played by John Hillerman, an ex-British Army Sergeant Major. Oh, so not camp, but I think when Americans <laughs> British. cast British people, they were pretty much all camp. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, I, think I got one out yeah. of two. Yeah. In, in America, British people and gay people, it's kind of like they're interchangeable. The same. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, and <laughs> sorry, apologies, uh, to Simon. I know you're watching, maybe. Uh, no, I'm not going to apologize. I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could give a shit. I love you, man. Uh, okay. So, an ex British Army Sergeant Major, he is on the surface a stern by the book caretaker of Robin's Nest, whose strict ways often conflict with Magnum's more easygoing methods. He, patrol, he patrols Robin's nest with his two highly trained lads, Doberman Pinchers, named Zeus and Apollo. Magnum has free use of the guest house and a car, so we know the car, a Ferrari 308 That's GTS, yeah. Quattro Valvole, but has a humorous aside in various episodes, often has to bargain with Higgins for use of the estate, amenities such as the tennis court, wine cellar, and expensive cameras. I'm still reading this, unlike the other reviews, because this is a fascinating premise it's, to a TV show. Weird, isn't it? Very unique. I, are you okay with me continuing reading on? Because yeah, I, kind I of feel like this is a book that I want to know where it's going. I feel the same way. So the relationship between Magnum and Higgins is initially cool, but as the series progressed, an unspoken respect and fondness of sorts grew between the pair. Many episodes dedicated more screen time to this odd couple pairing after the relationship proved popular with fans. Recurrent theme throughout the last two seasons started in the episode Paper War involves Magnum's sneaking suspicion that Higgins is actually Robin Masters since he opens Robin's mail, call, uh, calls Robin's Ferrari his car, etc. This is all fascinating. This suspicion is neither proved nor disproved, although in at least one episode, Higgins is shown alone in a room, picking up a ringing phone and talking to Robin Masters, indicating they are two different people. Well, that kind of gave it away for me. So... Uh, so this is this is an interesting premise, and, and in my mind, I'm just trying to figure out what sort of work or what what's he done to to have this property and have this estate. But it just sounds like a really interesting framework for a TV show. Yeah, it does. Uh, like you said, it, it's very idealistic, isn't it? Like the location in Hawaii, this amazing estate, and he's got kind of seemingly free reign to all of this stuff. Um, this really cool stuff, hmm. especially the car. I remember that was like you know. I think the two main things that I remember in in this series was the Ferrari and the mustache. Those are like yeah. really the premise of it. So, uh, yeah, mate, I, I'm really glad you went through that. I'm I'm, I'm even more intrigued to, to get into the episode now. So, yeah. so you've done a bit of searching and found the most popular one. Yeah, so I found the most popular one, and it is uh, episode one, season one. Is that the right oh, one? Oh, really? Straight no, that's in. not the one. Hold on, let me find the correct one, because that wasn't the one that I... I was going to say it's rare. The pilots are ever the best one. It kind of takes time to develop characters and yeah, the top rated one. Don't eat the snow in Hawaii. It's season one, episode one. Oh. So the the Ooh. highest rated one on I. So that's that's how it is. Just let me know if you can hear it. I can. All right. So let me get ready. Oh, hold on. Fuck off. You gotta keep that. No. You gotta keep this in. Do I have to keep this in? Do you think you I got need it. To keep it in? All right, I'll keep it in. Anyway, now that people can see that we're not, you know, incredible at this, I guess uh I guess I'll feel a bit more free to just be myself. Wait, human. Yes. Uh okay, so uh no longer uh we're not gonna wait any longer. No longer do I, I again, I'm just totally out of whack right keep now. It. 
keep it. <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's watch Magnum PI. Yeah, thanks. This guy's awesome. He is the man. Me? I live here too. So why am I breaking in? Well, I made a deal with Robin to run a series of security checks in exchange for living free in the guest house. The first check was to try and steal the Ferrari. Take it you, yo yo. <laughs> Be a few minutes late picking Dan up, but uh, when he saw the Ferrari, he'd forgive me. <laughs> well, put Lieutenant Cook on, will you? I'm sorry, Magnum, I can't. He's dead. What if it's true? What if Dan was smuggling? I don't believe you said that. You don't actually believe that Dan Cook swallowed a dozen packets of Coke to smuggle it in the islands, do you? It's rather disgusting when you think about it, but yes. And the only person on this island who wants to find Dan's killer more than you is me. And since you're the only one who's doing anything about it, I'm sticking with you. Are you all right, Tom? Fine. Do you reckon this is going to be another to be continued? I think so. Oh, oh man! Oh god! Come on! No! Joking! Oh fuck! Man, so this is the first vintage show that I've watched where I have forgotten that it was a vintage show. I mean, there was points in other shows that we've reviewed where that's happened, but this one, you know, outside of the fact that there was some dated music and, and of course the cars, the clothes are dated and maybe even some of the behaviors with towards some of the women were a bit dated or how they portrayed some women. That being said, um, it was, it was very relatable to today's standards. Yeah. I, 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 I would agree mostly with that, to be honest, mate. Uh, I, I felt very similarly to Miami vice where I was just in it, just, just enjoy watching a TV program and, and enjoying it. Looking at this show though, from beginning to end, um, even the way it was set up, it was just, it was very well done. It really introduced you to the show. It was one of the best for mm -hmm. me was one of the best. It wasn't a pilot, but season one, episode one shows I've seen. It seemed like a pilot and I, I would give the same, uh, a kind of, positive remarks as well mate the fact that actually they blended it in really well like introducing you to the character the backstory their environment all that type of stuff um it was it was a little different and i, and I liked it well the, the way they the way they introduced the character it, i i thought it was well written in to introduce his his background his skill set how he came to living at the house the relationship with higgins and how that was going to set up and even his personality. So you you have the women who are living there, uh, you know, obviously professionals who weren't working. You know, they'd finished their their shift as you know probably directors of companies. Those two More blonde women. Go back to your swim. Tidal pool sure looks good in the moonlight. Yeah, it's going to be nice to get out of the suits and back in the water. Yeah. That was my expectation, and they were having a nice break. Uh, but just you know, his casual calm cool casual uh personality it, you know what they were demonstrating early on I, I thought they did a really good job of of just getting you into the into the show in a very short span of time within five minutes i felt like i was up to speed and could watch every episode as if i'd been there for years yeah i i agree when i watched the episode and and maybe i've seen like segments of it as well i i just remember it being more like jokey like like a bit silly cheeky I, I, and that was in there, but th and maybe this is just the one-off episode, but it seems a lot more serious and captivating than I was expecting. I, I was really taken back by that. 
So yeah. with Miami Vice, I was expecting it based on what you said and the trailer, and there was just like there was a quality to it. But Magnum PI, I wasn't. I'm kind of pleasantly surprised with how much I, I liked that side of it. There was more quality than I was expecting. Yeah, I got to. I got to use the caveat that his backwards entry into his guest house was um, unbel- It was off the scale of cringeability. Hello, hi guys. Yeah. Higgins, what are you doing? I thought we should have a bit of a chat. <laughs> um, with the two dogs waiting for him. But that aside, uh, I mean, Higgins, I find cringeable. His clothes yeah. are abysmal. But outside of that, you know, it, it wasn't too bad. There wasn't a lot of it, you know. It was, it was, it was good. I think his acting was actually, you know, solid throughout. I mean, it's Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck is is an A list actor, I think historically. So he's not he's a heavy hitter. That's if you want to at the time. I think if you want to have a a top notch TV show and you want to cast an amazing lead, Tom Selleck's the guy. He's he's even as a man, I find him attractive. I'll be perfectly Don't, honest. He's he's an attractive man. <laughs> he's an attractive man. He's a man's man, and he's got that great range of just uh, the kind of silliness with the phone and the stairs. I thought it was ace. Yeah, and then you combine that with the seriousness of him you know like squaring up to the uh captain and yeah. you know he's got he's got that kind of range of emotions and yeah uh, it's uh he's a captive very charismatic and likable yeah. yeah it's that unflappability i think uh, yeah. a lot of times you look for in in a you know uh, like miami vice when we, we watch that you know crockett and tubbs unflappable and and yeah. that's something that you look for you don't want to see them get riled and and even just the, the, they they joke about it a bit in you know there was a scene with the car chase and he was he was saying well I, I wasn't you know really thinking about the guns I was worried that you know if I if I pulled away from them in the car it's going to wreck the car and then I yeah. thought well why am I worried about that I'll just get away and it was just the casual nature with which he handles himself in in dangerous situations I mean it's very cliche of the time but it works really well in this you, you don't want your your lead in this show. And I think with these shows, they're they're in and out, they're quick hitting, and you want them to be easily digestible in a very short span of time because you then go back to whatever you were doing or onto the next show. And and I think this this does this very well. I think it's it's a challenge. The more I watch these shows from the 80s, the harder I think it is to write these shows in a manner that you can be complex and simple at the same time. Mm, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I didn't really think about that. It, it, it was. It just occurred to me, be, and it's more to the point that you were talking about how it surprised you with how. What did you say? It was. It, it was more engrossing than I thought. I guess it was the quality. Yeah, of the, the plot line was a bit. Yeah, a bit more a drama. I yeah. was in it. I was really, you know, enjoying it and watching it, and I, I wasn't expecting that. I, I was expecting far more cheese backing into the door, and he's there type of, you know, type of thing. I was expecting way more of that. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised with the quality of it. But I think I think when you look at I, I kind of ignored that that episode because I think a lot of times I chalk that up to a period piece anyway. Um, and what and we spoke about this earlier. When I look at the scene where he's giggling, getting his his um, uh, not magnifying binoculars, glasses, his binoculars, binoculars whilst he's on yeah. the phone. Good man. Yes. Hello. <laughs> that was so where where I get kind of nerdy with these things and what I appreciate is I appreciate how well that scene was put together even for the time. It was it was enjoyable. You forgot you were watching an actor and and I think I said to you that's something I could see myself doing. I identified with that immediately. Um, whereas if I'm watching some totally. of these other shows from the eighties, or if we look at that example of him backing into the doorway and Higgins and the two dogs standing there, you know, waiting, how long ha- has, was he standing there? Uh, you know, it's, why did he back into his own place? I exactly. don't get that. I guess he was worried about the dogs maybe coming after him. Uh, that was it. But to the extent that he had zero care about where he was walking into as a private investigator, <laughs> forces, you're like, ah, 
I don't know if you'd do that. But that's that's more what I would expect. And and when I look at that scene with the binoculars, I just thought that was that was a good example of for me, it just really hooked me on the character, you know, that yeah, me that, too. that fun loving uh, you know, he 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 played it cool with the ladies, but you know, he didn't take himself too seriously, you know, when he was on his own. Um, yeah, it was. Mate, there it, was there, there was some handy work with the phone too. Let's give him some props for that. There's a little bit right. of skill in that, in that, especially <laughs> when he flicked it up and caught it first hand when it was dangling down. Yeah, had his binoculars, ran back up and then flicked it, caught it, and then he was like, "Hey, get me on!" And he was like looking. It was <laughs> this. There's like a smoothness to it. There's the playfulness of it. Yeah, like he giggled. It was like he was in the moment, and you could relate to like yeah. I could totally imagine doing and being exactly the same as yeah. that. And uh, yeah, it was it was quite endearing, wasn't it? The the other thing I think is worth noting, the storyline, and I think what made it so captivating was the storyline was actually very, very good as far as how they they brought in the, the dramatic element where I, I wasn't questioning the plausibility of the storyline, which I think to a certain degree, when, when we watched A-Team, um, Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> Maybe maybe less so Miami Vice, but you, you question. Yeah, there was even elements that we questioned in Miami Vice. I didn't really question the premise of this storyline. I wanted to know how did he end up with cocaine in his stomach. Yeah, I they wanted kept to that know. Right. Yeah, there's not and, even you know, and why they're trying to kill kill him, and there, there's a lot of unknowns there. Yeah, and it's not it's it's not a distraction. I'm not. It, it's not as if, um, you know, it's it's not contrived in any way. It's it's just. A very simple. They didn't go with anything complex. They went with something very plausible, and they went with somebody who's very close to him. And you have, you know, identifying with that character, which automatically you identify with Tom Selleck. You buy into him as a character. Now you have, you know, you're you're looking at this storyline through the lens of his eyes, and you're just really intrigued. You want him to go and get that file. You want him to get more information. You want and. That that was for me the most disappointing to be continued we've seen as of yet to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I yeah. Feel, feel exactly the same uh, way. Um, and weirdly, my timing of when I mentioned it and within a couple of seconds, it popped up to be continued. It's like, no! <laughs> but, so um, I, I I put this one, uh, for me, I'm I'm thinking this one's going to be the best reviewed one in my view. This episode alone, I, I'm, I'm in the nines and I wasn't for any of the other ones. Yeah, mate, this has got to be up there. Yeah. Um, I think it might edge the Miami Vice and the Miami Vice was better in some regards. There was a bit more artistic flair going on and I, and I yeah. appreciated it for that. There was some higher quality in Miami Vice, but just being in it, I think I felt, and maybe there's some bias because there's more recency bias Yeah, that, you know, because we've just seen it is better, but I, I think it was just for me, whatever my Miami Vice was, it's slightly more. I, I'm going to find it difficult to compare it to Batman because it's a different, it's a drama versus a comedy. And for me, there's no better. It's just whatever mood that you're in for, whether you're in for yeah. something a little bit more serious or the humor. So um, what would, have you got the scores there, Sean? Yep, yeah, I'm just about to I'll bring these up now. Yeah, that's I'm bringing these up, I, I think it's fair to compare. Um, and if I were to compare the, uh, whilst I bring this up, multitasking Because Batman, champion. I think, is winning, isn't it? I think that the reason I feel comfortable comparing these um, is is down to how engrossed I was, or how 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 much bought in I was to the actual show itself. And I really like Batman, um, to, and I I am in full agreement with our scoring. But if I take all of these shows independently, I was more invested in this in my time watching this than any of the other four shows. So I think even though they're very different, I still think we can judge them on a similar scale of, you know, it's it's a general enter entertainment score that we're looking at. Yeah. Okay. And we, well, we have got, to judge got, it on its. I've got my score. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to say, so if Batman is 8.9, I'm going to say 9.1 for Magnum. Oh, okay. So I was going to split the difference between Batman and Miami because Batman for me, I would always pick humor of a drama and I absolutely loved last week. And I was, I really wanted to watch another one. Yeah. I felt this pipped Miami Vice. Uh, the, Miami Vice has it in other categories, but overall as an episode, I'm going in at a, an 8.8 .8, and it's probably on the conservative. It could go up to higher, but I'll stick with that, especially as you're in the nines. So, so well, no, we, we got to go with the average. So 8.8 .8 and I said 9.1. 
So we're we're at eight point nine five. Yeah, which would be rounded up to nine. Yeah. So uh, I think that's a safe way for us to go is to you know just pick our scores and find the average because we we have different views on these items. And let me hey, professionally. Hey, sure. Don't, I was going to say, don't give away how you do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, the can't, you is... can't show the magic trick, Sean. That's not the I, whole point. It... I think once we screwed up the uh, once we screwed up the intro, the, the you know we the the curtain was was undrawn. We we were now seen for who we are, and that's not high level professionals. Mate, I think a little bit of magic is lost. Let, let us know in the comments below if you're a little bit disappointed with Sean displaying <laughs> yes. how we've constructed the vintage re review table. Hold on, but watch this. There's not many people that can do this whilst recording. Boom. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. So 8.95 for Magnum PI. And I have to say, I was genuinely surprised at how, yeah. how much I enjoyed that. And I, I think that credit credit to that show, and, and you can see why it was going for eight years. And I, I think even just the way they set it up, it's not rocket science what they put together. It's not, you know, we're not... Um, challenging societal norms watching this with you know the, the, these producers were creating something that was very um digestible however even just reading the description you were engrossed in that whole idea and they cast it well um you know there was to be fair higgins is questionable however you could see that dynamic getting a bit better as the series goes on solid show yeah, and I, I, it's just making me think of the importance of expectations when you go into these shows because mm -hmm. Miami Vice said, I had you not said anything about that, nothing at all, I would have gone into watching that thinking that Miami Vice is probably a little bit cheesy. You got the white suits and the kind of slick back hair mm -hmm. and the fashion and stuff. And I would have been surprised with the drama element and how much it sucked me in. But because we went into that detail, Prior to it and watching the trailer, I was like, oh, this is this actually looks that like there's got some real substance to it. And kind of on the flip side, the Dukes of Hazard expecting that to be, you know, really witty and hearing your comment. Actually, the feedback is really you. <laughs> you, you picking up the shows and me being like, oh, I'm really excited. And then being like, oh, it wasn't quite what I thought. Mm. Um, not that I felt that about Miami Vice, by the way. I thought it was mm. awesome. Um, yeah. But my point really is just about the ex expectation going in. Like I, like I had lower expectations for this. I, I thought, I can't wait to hear the theme music again. What's yeah. the Ferrari? Good old handsome Tom Selleck uh, and the old camp British guy. Um, <laughs> and I'm standing by. I think he's camp. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, stick, the stick of the outfit, just, you know, cross him over that line for me. That, um, I, I don't think we spoke. We probably should have addressed that uh, more front and center. The the wardrobe the on Higgins and the shorts and the he was the on safari, bird. constantly yeah. on safari. I, I think with these shows that um, you know there was th there was some serious angles to Magnum mm -hmm. in this, and it's it was part of the light relief, right? That there's, yeah. you know, I think I think when you have a quality program throughout, the real top shows have that blend of everything where you can laugh yeah. a little bit, you can cry a little bit, you can get, you know, it's got everything um, in it. So um, I think. Although he's maybe a less serious, uh, we could poke holes at that character. I think it kind of helps with the light relief. Magnum PI in the books. We we are now on to the next next week, and we need it's your turn to decide what you want to watch. All right, I've chosen want? Magnum. Yeah, um, great choice. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. What's on the table, Sean? We got we got Airwolf, MacGyver, MacGyver. Yeah, we said MacGyver. We said Airwolf. We said um, what else was there? Baywatch. There was <laughs> so death through Baywatch. Chips. Um, never seen that. Um, I I remember watching that way back in the day. There was um, another show I remember growing up watching was Tour of Duty, which was very uh, gritty at the time. Well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna call Baywatch again. It's. It, I, I'm, Ooh, I'm, yeah. You know, it's it's my call. Uh, I'm going with one that I have watched now. Um, this is probably a number two as far as episodes watched um, for me in the 80s show, mm -hmm. like 18 being top. Baywatch coming in at around us. I say 80s, sorry, growing up, it, it, it might, it's probably 90s as well. I don't really know the time date, but mm. my, my dad was, a, was an avid fan, and uh, I remember watching it with him, and he would, you know, obviously pass comments at some of the certain scenes the running scenes on the beach in particular were some of his favorites <laughs> um 
So I'm, I'm quite looking forward to the cheesiness um, of Baywatch, especially off the back of that one clip we watched several weeks ago when we got <laughs> oh, that ba- baseball player swing. I, I, I'm looking forward to this because I think it's going to be a different element. This isn't a comedy, yeah. but there's going to be comedy throughout. Yeah, this this is going to be probably the most cringy show that we're going to watch. I think so. I mean, yeah. th- Hulk Hogan, watch your back because Baywatch is coming. Yeah, because I, I look at the scores that we've given, 8.95 to Dukes of Hazard, and, and let it be known that I am not playing favorites to the shows that I want to see win because that 7.5, I, I think I agreed with that score. I wanted that one to do well. Um, I think Baywatch is going to really challenge what the bottom end of our scoring. That's my prediction. Baywatch is going to really test what we – because we both have seen the show. I'm going to judge it on the merits of the, of the episode we watch. However, I could see this challenging us as to what the bottom score will be. You know, where, where well, do we rate this? Okay, so I'm going to have a prediction in that when we look at what the best episode is, I have a feeling there were a couple of more serious two-part episode ones – I, I think we'll get one, and I think there there might be one that's more serious, and we might be, and we'll be going into it expecting the kind of baseball player swinging on the beach type of thing, and there won't be as much of it. And I think actually that wasn't bad; it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad because we have this low expectation. But if we find a a kind of run of like you know potluck episode, mm. then I think we're looking at kind of you know gutter scoring. Um, but hu- humor may bring it back. I think I think we need to stick with the IMDb top. I think I agree. Yeah, I think in saying this, consistent. yeah, I think a good scoring metric is how disappointed we are that we didn't get to see episode two. Yeah. It's 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 difficult, and I, I think I think we can still judge the show on its merits by watching a part one. So I think to be fair to because I am going to be fair to Baywatch, just because my my prediction is we're going to be testing what our lower half of the scoring table looks like. That doesn't mean that I'm going to necessarily do that. Um, give, it, and, give it a chance. We'll see. And yeah, it's well. been a long time. And yeah, yeah. Well, uh, mate, I wanted to say as well, just to, before I forget, it was Knight Rider was another one we talked about. Knight Rider. Oh, it's nice. David Hasselhoff. Yeah. So yeah. he's in there as well. I've got to remember him. Well, mate, that was really enjoyable. We're going to be moving on to the after show. And I'm just going to bring up the socials, which um, I don't know if you noticed, but we were sharing things on Twitter this week again. Oh, no, I didn't. I've not been on it for a long yeah. time. Oh, yes. okay. So we shared our last uh, episode, which was the Batman episode uh, on Twitter. So we're going to be doing being a little bit more active on Twitter. Uh, Facebook is still there. And I think we're just going to use that. If I'm honest, we're just going to use that as a reactive platform. And then okay. Instagram is the big project. So we're just going to really <laughs> build that one up. And that's, that's going to be mwah, chef's kiss. That's going to be the the... I guess the backbone to this bearded philosophy platform. So with Facebook, when you say it's re- we ain't doing shit, it's really down to you no, no, no. guys to to yes. get to get busy. Come on, you lot. Um, yeah, put stuff on there, then we can do. We'll work on it. It's That's like a phone number. Saying. It's like a phone number. If you want to call us, we're reachable via Facebook, and we yeah. will interact on Facebook. But we don't have any credit. No, no, not at no, all. We're not fighting so, you. Yeah, it's like we're in prison and we're waiting for collect yeah. calls to come in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so we're gonna go on to the after show. What we're gonna do? We're gonna be live this week on the after show, and we're gonna then uh, be uploading elements. Um, I did have. I'll, I'll share with you on the after show, but I've had some feedback about our show. We actually do have people that are watching and listening on a weekly basis, and I have had some constructive feedback. Um, oh, so okay. I will share that. But what I'll do is awesome. I'm gonna end this broadcast. And I'm going to start a new one, Hugo. Uh, and I have to go for a fourth P. So I look forward to catching everybody next week. And Hugh, I will be live with you in about two minutes. See you in two. All Thanks, right. Guys. We'll see everybody. Thanks. See you next week.